Thank you, Master. Would you turn to 1 Peter chapter 4? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7. Ah, I see now. Is everybody there? Let's read it together. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore be what? Serious and watchful in your prayers. Be serious and watchful in your prayers. So while you're praying, you're to be seen. Amen. Now, one of the things that one of the things that people fall into in the arena of being serious, serious is not religious. See, people get religious in an arena. They, they got to they got to they got to See, walking with Christ is a simplicity. Being serious means that as you're praying, God begins to unfold things. It's not you ripping through the pages. He unfolds it. And as he unfolds it, you begin to see it. You sense it, you see it, then you begin to taste it. Something that you know that you know. So many times people are paying more attention to themselves. They're willing to hear from self more than they are willing to hear from God. And not even knowing it. And it causes confusion and frustration. It causes oppression. So one of the things is the enemy comes to push it, right? And the spirit comes to what? Lead. It's simple. Intellect tries to complicate things. I was on the phone today with a gentleman of complicating things. And, and, and one of the things, you know, it's like, man, just take a minute, man. Step out of the puddle of affliction. Just step away from it. Don't try to calculate your way out of it. Step away from it. And praise God. See, so many times people are, are trying to make God's will. And you can't make God's will. Amen? You serve his will. <laughs> and so he says here, you know, make sure, know that uh, uh, the end of all things is at hand. So there's an area that we, he's preparing us. If somebody tells you, look at the end of all things is at hand, it's like, hey, listen, pay attention because there's going to be a lot of interruption. There's going to be a lot of influence. There's going to be a lot of things that the enemy's trying to distract. <clears throat> Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. In verse 8, and above, above all things have what? Fervent love for one another. This is a warning. He says, why? Because one of the things that the enemy is going to do is to prevent you or nullify fervent love. He's trying to bridge, break that bridge of love. He's trying to bust things so that we fall from love to lust. So he says, man, fervent love. Make sure that you, you maintain what? That uh, above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover what? A multitude of sins. <laughs> well, why would it cover a multitude of sins? Because you're not looking to love, you're not looking to lust, you're looking to love. Where there's lust, there is sin. Where there's love, there is peace. There is rest, there is joy, there's obedience. It's different. Okay, verse 9, it says, Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has a, received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let them speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let them do it as with the ability with which what God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the, and the dominion forever and ever. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. So, now, okay, so he tells us these things, right? He's, he's warning us. Now look at the next verse. What does he say? 
Beloved, do not think it strange concerning what? The fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. So in other words, he tells us and then he expresses, look at one of the things the enemy is going to try to do is move you from love to lust. Does everybody got it? He said, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when, he is when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part he's blaspheming, but on your part he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel? Fervent love overcomes sin. It overcomes sin. It overcomes self. It overcomes the world. Again, the battle will become more evident. It's going to become more evident that the love for self and the world is going to be more and more seen. Does everybody understand? You know, these are going to be end time challenges <clears throat> for each and every one of us because the enemy is going to come and provoke He's going to provoke us to look for a false fulfillment. And lust is a false fulfillment. He's going to try and provoke and, 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 and encourage more of self. Where people become in the arena. Listen, when lust is there, the promotion of self is there. The protection of self is there. So what it does is it establishes more offense. More bitterness. More division. Amen? But fervent love is something special. Fervent love is the fire of God. <laughs> fervent love is the fire of God. And it only can be obtained in his presence. That's why people fall from, from fervent love to lust. Because they're not maintaining God's presence, that fire. Again, fervent love is the fire of God with the intensity of the Spirit. It is a consistency of obedience with zeal. There's no shame. There's no fear. In fact, the Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. So we're this, this place of fervent love is it's God's fire and it only can come from his presence it nullifies everything else of the entanglements of the lust of the eye lust of the flesh and pride of life of the world is everybody okay Matthew 24 <clears throat> Matthew 24 in verse 3, and now as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when all these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. Jesus answered and said, take heed that no one was, what? Deceive you. Again, we know that the only way the enemy can manipulate is by deception. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. In other words, he, what he's talking about is there's going to be many religions that are going to come and they will not promote fervent love. They will promote lust. And you will hear wars and rumors of war. Of course, that's a fruit of the false Christ. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. Is that happening? Yeah. And these are the beginning of sorrows. 
Then they will deliver you up to tribulation. So we'll go from beginning to hours of tribulation. And they will kill you. And they will, you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Why? Because they've fallen into lust. They've fallen out of fervent love. If they've ever reached it. The many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end will be what? Saved. In other words, many will grow cold of love. But he who endures, he who maintains fervent love, the fire of God, will make it to the end. In Ephesians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Is everybody there in verse 14? Let's speak it together. Ephesians 3, 14. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded where? In love. In other words, being rooted and grounded in his presence. Why? Because fervent love is established and maintained in his presence. And may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Rooted and grounded in love. Rooted and grounded. Why? Because if you are rooted and grounded in this love, which we call fervent love, which is an area of uh, uh, an obedience, of a zeal obedience. You, you love to be obedient. Why? Because you know it pleases him. And in this area where you know that the fire of God, God's presence is vitally number one most important thing to your life. His presence. And his presence is this fervent love. And this love nullifies everything else. Why? Because fervent love is the fire of God. Amen? And in this, God wants us to become accustomed to it so that we are not only rooted in it, but we are grounded in it. You know when the fire begins to go down. You know when you're allowing the flesh you know when the voices are taking over. You know. Why? Because in this love, nothing can touch you. Nothing. Only what we allow. 1 Corinthians 13. In verse 3, it says, Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and Though I give my body to be burned, but not have love, it profits me what? Nothing. Why? Because he said to be rooted and grounded. That's foundational. In love. This is fervent love. Love suffers long and is kind. Hello. This is what it is. I, I, again, I, I, we can't, this is the definition of what he's saying is this love. He says, what is it? He says, it suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Remember I share with you, the enemy is going to try and provoke you. Well, he can't. If you maintain that position. You know, it's amazing because... Individuals, when, when lust is involved, it promotes self. Self says, I need a position to exalt myself. Love says, stay in position so he can be exalted. 
It does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil. Does not think evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all dear all things, endures all things. Love never fails. This love never fails. Never fails. Lust fails. Fervent love doesn't. Amen? Fervent love covers sin because it doesn't look at selfish lust or ambitions, desires. It keeps its eyes on Jesus. Again, that's where the Lord is always before us, isn't it? In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, what does it say? It says what? Pursue love. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may what? Prophesy, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. So what is he saying? He said, look at pursue love. Why? And desire the gifts. Because the gifts should always be backed by the love of God, not by the promotion of self. Prophecy should never be promoting self. Does everybody get this? I've seen many individuals, and it's pretty shameful, that they use the gifts of the Spirit to gain money. They want to go around and prophesy to people and expect a big donation. And that's wrong. It's wrong. God knows what we need. Amen? So we're to pursue the love of God, which means pursue his presence and desire that the manifestations of the gifts will come through me and you. Whether it be words of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, vision, laying out of hands, whatever it may be. In other words, be ready in season and out. But it must be backed by love. Amen? Not by pride. James chapter 1. James 1. In verse 12, would you read it with me, please? Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who what? Love him. Love him. See, he gives us love to love him. <laughs> is that right? I mean, this... It's like, man, I don't know if I love God. Well, then go get it. Remember, love is a choice. And that choice is to get in God's presence and receive his love so you can love him and love others. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. He says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and what? Enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. So again, we, you know, God is preparing. He's letting us know, look at the enemy's out to breach the love between you and God. He's trying to get us to look at another area where, where lust falls or he's trying to bring, he's offering lust for exchange of God's love. Fervent love is the presence of God. It is also the fear of God. Because where the presence of God is, there's the fear of God, which is reverence, honor, and respect. One of the things that's always important with God's love, let me share with you one of the first things that will begin to breach it is to be dishonest. You know, the word says, seek him with all of your heart. You know, God knows whether we're using him 
even though he's using us. <laughs> he, he can use anyone. And people think, well, God's using me. I must be all right. No, he can use anyone. In fact, he warns us because uh, there was a many that are going to come before him at the end and say, Lord, you used me greatly. He said, yes, depart from me. I don't know you. Why? You practice lawlessness. I allowed you to use me so I could use you. But now it's time to talk about what's occurred. Now it's time to be rewarded or judged by what has been done. And then he says, depart from me. Amen? So one of the things that will quickly begin to cause separation is being dishonest. We must be honest all the time. Don't hide it. Speak it. Express it to him. Any dishonesty will breach it. It will begin to separate. That's why he offers repentance. Praise God. First John chapter 4. In verse 7, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Let's speak it together, please. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propri propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. And his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we, are, we abide in him. And he in us because he has given us of his what? His spirit. Again, God's love is his presence. It is his spirit. It is his fire. It is his character. It is his nature. Love is God. Amen? Anything that's not love is not God. It's plain and simple. 1 Peter 1. Everybody okay? You know, again, the Holy Spirit always prepares us and trains us. You know, because we don't even realize whether we're involved in something or getting ready to be attacked by something. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 13. Therefore, gird up the loins of your what? Mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as what? Obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Let me tell you something. This love is holy. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, which is known as the fear of God, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. In other words, this love is holy. 
Amen. You know, there's no one else that was risen from the dead. <laughs> proclaiming to be God. In Galatians chapter 5. So again, he warns us that there's going to come a lot of false religions. Because the enemy began to infiltrate, to start everything to oppose the doctrine of Christ Jesus. And that's his job. In Galatians chapter 5, is everybody there? Verse 16. I say then what? Walk in the Spirit, which means walk in love. Walk in fervent love. And you will not fulfill the what? Lust of the flesh. Hello. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so they do not do the things that you wish or desire. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law of sin and death. Okay, here it is. Now the works of the flesh, which is the works of lust, are evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I want you to look at something. If God is love, and we are filled with his love, it becomes one. It's emerging. See, lust cannot enter love. Love enters love. Lust is blocked out from love. Does everybody get that? Good. All right, let's go a little further. So the only way lust can infiltrate love if it's allowed. That's the only way it can infiltrate. It's allowed. And when we allow it, we actually invite it. So it's walking in the spirit is walking in his presence, which is actually walking in fervent love, isn't it? All right, let's go a little further. But the fruit of the spirit in verse uh, 22, but the fruit of the spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, Self-control against there is what? No law. There's no lust. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires, which is lust. Why? Because the flesh lives, survives on lust. But the spirit survives on God's love. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit, which is the same as walking in fervent love. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. In other words, don't be used. Don't be what? Used. So again, the Spirit of God is love. The flesh of man is lust. The powers of darkness are lost. There was two trees in the garden. One was life, one was death. One was love, one was lust. And the rest of them, they're fulfilling. Does everybody get that? That's why Jesus said, look, you can eat all the rest of the trees, but don't eat this one. Here's the one that you're going to eat that's life. Here's the one that's death. It's the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. See, that's why people are still eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is actually lust. So they're not walking in the fullness of God's love, fervent love. But they're walking in lust. They're still living a life of self. 2 Corinthians 3. The kingdom of God is not a drive-through. 
and it is in Burger King. So you're not going to get it your way. <laughs> you're going to get it Yahweh. Second Corinthians chapter three and verse five. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the what? Spirit is life. The letter rules Laws, religions, regulations. What it does is it promotes self. Which is also love. It kills. But the spirit gives life. That life is the love of God. And the love for God. Galatians chapter 5. In verse 1. fervent love. Galatians 5 verse 1, Stand fast therefore in the liberty, which means freedom, by which Christ the anointing has made us free. The anointing makes us free. Why? Because the anointing breaks every yoke of bondage and the anointing is God's love. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage or lust. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. If you have become estranged from Christ, you, you who attempt to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Again, we see that we do not let go or misuse the freedom of Christ. We grab hold of truth and reality. Remember, Jesus came as the offering for me and you. The ultimate offering. It's pretty amazing because the, the Bible says God so loved the world. Amen. God so loved the world. In other words, he so loved the man. People think it's the world. It wasn't about the world. It was that he loved mankind. God so loved mankind that he brought love into this realm. And he allowed love to be killed so it could be resurrected and distributed to every single one. Ephesians 4. You know, in Jesus' death and resurrection, love actually defeated lust. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. Would you speak it with me? Therefore, putting away what? Lie and let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not what? Grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. How many of all know God says that love is forgiveness? Amen? Now, you know, there's an area. Listen, we're to love everyone, but you don't have to like everyone. Does everybody get it? I love everyone, but I don't like everyone. Why? Because I don't like what they do. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5. In 
You know, so many people have a hard time with forgiveness because they think it's got, they're waiting for a feeling to forgive. Forgiveness is a choice. Just like love is a choice. Hallelujah. Man, I just don't know if I've been forgiven. <laughs> Did you ask to be forgiven? Yeah. Well, hello. But I don't feel it. Uh-oh, you're one of those, huh? <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Emotion. Those are the ones you hug. I love you, you idiot. <laughs> idiot means spiritually blinded. Why? Because they cannot see. They cannot receive. Because they're so led by emotion, they can't overcome that. And it misleads them every time. Does everybody get that? Emotion is deadly, man. The only emotions we want is peace, joy, and righteousness. In the Holy Spirit, which is what? Love. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5 and verse 43. <laughs> Glory. I literally have walked up to some people that have come up to me. I've seen them who've backslidden. I said, man, I love you, you bonehead. You idiot. You know what's better. You know what to do. I love them. But they choose to allow emotions and lust to lead them instead of love and truth and God's presence. I, was at, I went to the... Uh, auto parts store a few days ago and there was somebody I ran into. Man, I was in the same thing. Man, you know better. What are you doing out there? person looked terrible. And, and it wasn't because they were working hard. <laughs> they were emotionally beat up. They couldn't receive forgiveness at all. And there was no way that they didn't feel that they were worthy enough to even receive it because they were so bound up. And I said, come on, man, you know better. Just do it. Yeah, I'll be there. You just lied. <laughs> Praise God. That's all we can do is pray for them, right? In verse 43. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and what? Persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun shine on the evil and the good. And sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? If you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Perfect love. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Glory. John chapter, chapter 10 and verse 7. Glory. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be what? Saved. And will go out and find pasture. 
The thief does not come except to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. Wow. But I have come to bring life and life more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. For other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them I also must bring, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down and power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Again, God so loved man that he came as man, died as man, and rose as God. I'm going to say that again. God so loved the world that he came as man, died as a man, and rose as God. Hmm. Nobody else said that. None of these goofy false religions. But again, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy because there is no love in Satan's kingdom. None. There's nothing but lust. Even the word tells us that many will come and say, talk about love, but really they don't love. They lust. They have hidden agendas. In John chapter 8, in verse 37, There are many belief systems, and a flawed belief system will promote flawed perception. There are many people that are dying on what they believe, even when it's incorrect. In verse 37, Jesus is speaking, and he says, Listen, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. You realize how many religions have been promoted saying they're from Abraham's descendants, but they're really not truly true. He said, I speak what I've seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to him, if, Abraham was your, Abraham's, if you were Abraham's children, you would do what the works of Abraham. So what was Jesus exposing? A flawed belief system. He was exposing a flawed religion. But now you seek to kill me. A man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God, Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said, if God were your father, you would what? Love me. You would love. If God's truly your father, you would love, not lust. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he who sent me. In verse 43, why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a what? Murderer from the beginning. And does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. This is a demonic influence that has penetrated and created its own religion. And behind this is Satan's kingdom. It's Satan. But he comes in all kinds of forms. 
He said, but because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. That is powerful. Very powerful. Father of lies and a murderer. Lust, not love. Amen? Lust, not love. You know, the other day I was, as I was in, in, sitting in my living room, and, and man, the, this love just came on me. And I felt, I felt so much love for so many people, especially people that were deceived. And then I saw a spirit, and behind a spirit, he said, this spirit hates all mankind. And of course, it was associated with Satan's spirit. And he said to me, his name is Allah. And he said, Allah even hates Muslims. He says he uses them to kill themselves so they can kill mankind. I thought, my gosh, why? Because there is no love. It is nothing but lust. And what is the reward? Virgins. Lust. Here's the reward. You die for me, you get a bunch of lustafarians. You get to have sex for the rest of your life. There is no sex in the afterlife. I was grieved. I felt so bad for them because they're so deceived. And the Lord had me start to intercede to come against the spirit of Allah. We need to come against that spirit and bind that thing. It's nothing but a demon. Is everybody okay? It doesn't carry any fervent love, and there's multiples of it. We got Baal, who's the offshoot of all of this stuff. All of these guys are associated. They're demonic principalities. They've come in from fallen angels. They're from Satan's kingdom. They're all promoting a religion to promote self. Is everybody all right? In fact, we're putting up on the Eternal Library, Islam Exposed. So anybody can go to it and see it and get understanding. It's powerful. In 2 Timothy chapter 3. How many of you know God loves Muslims? Yes. We should too. Second Timothy chapter three. Would you read it with me? But know this that in the what? Last days perilous times will come, for men will be what? Lovers of themselves, because they won't be lovers of God. If you're a lover of yourself, you carry lust. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient. To parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. In other words, they're full of lust. They're not fervent love. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people do what? Turn away. Turn away. Turn away. <laughs> False belief system, religions causing perilous times, believing that they are killing for God. This deception is evil and lust. And they are still eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is actually lust or death, not from the tree of life. Again, Allah is just one of the murdering spirits. It's just a murdering spirit. And there's many of them. And I want to close in Ephesians 5. So we've got to be careful what we touch and agree with, with our thoughts, with everything, our associations. You know, people can go from love to lust if they allow it.
verse 6. Let's read it. Let no one what? Deceive you. With what? Empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. And the word tells if anybody comes knocking at your door without the doctrine, the true doctrine, don't associate with it. You can love them. I love them, and then they usually run. I tell them it's truth, just pray in the spirit, man. You'll see the back of their feet. Therefore, do not, but make sure you put something in their hand as they're running, like truth. Not a grenade, truth. <laughs> Therefore, do not be what? Partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no what? Fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but what? Rather expose it. You know, people are afraid to expose things. I'm telling you, we're gonna, I'm going to do a we're going to do a research and expose every false. What's behind all of these religions? What's behind it? What's behind all of these denominations? What's behind it? What's influenced them? We might not be liked to well, but praise God, maybe people will come to the truth. I think it's vitally important that we know what's influencing. Why is this? Why? Because people are being deceived. They're being lied to. So it's our responsibility to expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you what? Light. See, then you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? Because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now look at what's the next verse. And do not be drunk with what? Wine in which dissipation, but be filled with the what? Holy Spirit, that way you're filled with fervent love. And fervent love covers a multitude of sins because you don't desire sin. You overcome sin with fervent love. Why? Because a fervent love is the fire of God. And when you're filled in with the fire of God, nothing can touch you unless you allow it. It will knock on your door. If you say, who's there? You may be inviting it in. <laughs> Amen. So maintain that fervent love. That's our responsibility. That's why it's important, again, to assemble. That's why it's important to uh, not only in fellowship, but to worship and corporate worship. The more you get filled with God's love, the more you get filled with his presence, the more love you have. And you can't give what you don't have. Amen. Only love, perfect love, casts out all fear. And fear, anger, bitterness is all associated with lust. And we don't want lust. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace in any area where we've exchanged your love for lust. We expose it. We remove it from us right now. Every spirit of lust, loose us and leave us now and go to the pit in the name of Jesus. Pride goes, lust goes, in the name of Jesus, and all fear goes, that we may walk in perfect love, in perfect harmony with the Holy Spirit, on fire, zealous for obedience, and willing to do whatever it takes to please you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed. Amen.